What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing another one of the ride and ramble videos. The only difference here is the ride was yesterday and the ramble is today from inside my warm studio. Yesterday we had gotten about maybe an inch of snow overnight and me and Ben went out riding. He was riding all the way out to the country to visit his family in Garrettsville. I joined him about till Kent, Ohio to what we call the Moon Tower Trails. My camera died a little bit before we got to the actual Moon Tower Trails though and I switched out the battery when we stopped to have a beer there. The little bit of snow we got helped because we were riding on the bike paths, the bike trails, um, in this case the Freedom Trail which runs between downtown Akron and Kent. Um, if it hadn't snowed at all, it would have been even worse with all the frozen and footprints and the slippery ice. The snow was just enough to give us a little traction, but it was still slow going and some spots were worse than, worse than others. Um, I averaged for the 28 mile ride um, under eight miles an hour and looking at some of the segments on Strava, um, a couple spots we were in were even slower. Some spots had been cleaned up a little bit at some point, you could tell. And then other ones were more um, where the snow must have drifted and uh, the footprints were deeper and you really had to pay attention. You know, there were times where, you know, just riding on a straight flat trail, um, I had to put a foot down just from, you know, losing control or concentration a little bit. Nothing dangerous, you know, we were going so slow that it was never really sketchy or anything like that. But just, yeah, you had to keep your concentration most of the time. Um, we rode single file a lot of the time. Um, some spots we were able to ride side by side and chat a little easier. But yeah, I was still, I was still glad to get out. Um, the Monday morning ride lately is something, or Monday afternoon even, that I've been trying to do with Ben. It's his day off from the shop. Um, so yeah, I've been, if I can, I try and make my schedule so I keep my Mondays open. I've been enjoying working Sunday evenings instead actually to make up for the time I'm missing on Monday morning. When I get up on Monday, I could deal with my emails, also send a couple drafts if I've been working on a video first thing Monday morning. And then when I get back, I'll by then I'll usually have heard a response and then on Monday late afternoon or the evening, I could you know, do another edit to send to my clients. You know, Sunday evenings used to, for at least 15 years, probably more than that, I've been doing family dinner. But with the pandemic, we since the weather changed, we haven't been doing it. So having Sunday nights free, that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, and the Monday ride with Ben, we actually started doing that when Ohio, well, I was going to say lockdown, but Ohio never really had a lockdown. We had a stay at home order that wasn't enforced, but you know, everything was closed, like the restaurants and the gyms and the barbershops. Um, so things were really slow and people weren't, you know, really hiring me for very much. So then I had my Mondays free and me and Ben got in the habit of doing a Monday ride. And we were trying to do longer ones too. We rode up to Cleveland uh, a couple times. We would get something to eat and, you know, sit outside somewhere, just bring extra clothes if it was still chilly because it was spring, you know, late spring. Uh, not late spring, early spring, but March is when this all kind of began last year. And yeah, we rode down to Maslin and got lunch. We sit outside um, so that was kind of like a thing that I was keeping you know then too like the Monday ride and really enjoying but then as it got into summer and it's late longer it didn't become as important to get that Monday ride in because we could ride after work and then Ben's other day off is Sunday and Aaron rides in the sun when the weather's in the summer when the weather is nicer so we would do like the longer rides and uh, exploring and stuff like that on Sundays more instead and then as summer went on late summer I actually got super busy with work um, I think it was a combination between things were opening up a little bit, uh, pandemic fatigue, which I think was going on, and the fact that I think people were worried as the weather changed, we would be going back into some kind of stay at home, lockdown, whatever you want to call it situation. So during the week, I was actually working a lot there for a little while. So anyways, yeah, all this to say that I've enjoyed getting back into doing the Monday rides and trying to reserve that day for getting out and about. It's a lot easier for me to make my schedule these days because nothing is really events anymore. You know, I did shoot a wedding over the weekend um, for a friend. I do weddings for friends. It's not something I do in general. And I've done it for friends of friends who are in a tight spot or are looking to save a little money, you know, just get their photos in a cloud folder, not worried about the prints and the wedding albums and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, besides that, it's been like nothing. I actually even um, had a friend ask, ask a friend asked me to take some family photos for them um, in early March 
on a Saturday morning and I just said yes. And because I didn't even look at my schedule because I haven't had any obligations on the weekends for so long, then I actually looked at my schedule and I realized that's the day of the Road Apple Roubaix, which is a race, a well, gravel ride, country ride, kind of gravelly that we do every year. And I had to tell her, email her back like, you know what? I said yes to something without checking my schedule because I never do anymore on the weekends. And that is the one day that I actually have something going on. So we rescheduled that. Yeah, and Road Apple, they're doing precautions um, with doing a wave start. So you have to schedule start time and all that. Um, I don't really know what they're doing with the after party, which is usually in a big bar right there in downtown Garrettsville. And so, I mean, I'm not going to be hanging out in there. Hopefully the weather's nice enough to have our beer and lunch that goes with the ride out on the patio. Um, I don't know. We'll just have to play all that by ear. But I'm glad we're still doing the ride, you know. Even with the wave start, and probably just be, you know, mask on and stuff like that for a little while. And then as you get spread out on the road, be able to take them off. So, yeah, that's just the, uh, the ramble, the ramble I'm doing while I'm just sitting here watching the video playback because I just put it all together in Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, yeah, you could tell, you could tell the kind of go we're having of it though by watching the tire slip and all that. I'll probably actually play this back in like a hyperlapse mode to match my however long I sit here and ramble for. The other thing I want to talk about is I had mentioned in the last video my how I was riding out to the bike shop to get a uh, Ordly bag warrantied. It was the seat post kind of bag where it actually just attaches to the seat post and comes out on a uh, its own post, I guess. And I was never too crazy about it. It was fine for light stuff, you know, extra layers, um, maybe a few bike tools, but it never really felt that secure or anything. And then, like I had mentioned, it finally it broke off one day. I just went over a little bump going into um, Missing Falls Brewery, like a little a curb, and it completely broke off. And so they don't even make that one anymore, uh, Otis at Dirty River told me, but they sent the new model. And the new model is much better, and it's obvious because as you watch how rough this whole ride was, I had no trouble with it. But what they had done is they switched it so there's a piece that attaches to your saddle rails, um, and then it has a Velcro strap that attaches to your pole to give it a little more security. So yeah, it's locked much more in place, just a much better system. And then even the um, kind of straps and buckles they use to secure the bag, because it is a waterproof um, bag that rolls up, are much better because the other ones were elastic and they went around these little, you know, you'd kind of hook them around a little clip, th clip thing. And I just felt like those were going to break or wear out. And um, with gloves, they were kind of a pain to hook on. These, it's just a much better system, you could tell. I'm guessing other people had the bag break, other people complained about the bag, and that's why they improved it to a much better version. I thought it was great that they sent me the new one too. I was pretty happy with that. It seemed like there was no issues there. They're like, yeah, we'll send a new one. So yeah, you could see why that would be better. And then, did I just say, I can't remember if I mentioned, but that new clip system that goes on the rails is quick release too. So your bag is not like permanently on there. You just undo one Velcro strap and push the button, you can pull it off. So if you are walking in somewhere where you don't want to leave your bag on your bike, or the other idea that I kind of like, and I'll see if I end up needing to do it, is buying a separate one of those um, pieces for the saddle rails and putting it on another bike, because then that bag could just easily be slid off one bike and put on the other. Um, it's one of the reasons I like my the set of pannier bags that I use on my Trek 500 when I tour, because that has that um, toe peak, I think they call those MTX racks, but I have two of them and same thing. That's like a slide and lock quick release system. Those are just really convenient. Um, Especially, you know, when you are traveling and touring and there's times when you want to pull the bags off really easily. I just really like those kind of systems. So anyways, yeah, I felt like that was a big upgrade and, you know, now it's a product that I would um, recommend and give a good review to. Um, not that I am a product reviewer or need to review stuff. I have mentioned that there are a couple things people have sent me that I am going to give a review to, but it would be just like when I talk about film um, photography or digital cameras or anything like that. I don't really so, per se review stuff. I just kind of describe how it works for me. And then, you know, you're able to make the decision if something like this would work for you. Um, and even though those other ones, you know, the bike stuff was sent to me for free, um, there was no, um, they didn't, 
ask for anything but a video so they didn't tell me to say anything so they're not you know so I could be honest about these products that I've been sent and they're for the bike stuff they're you know inexpensive Amazon products but if someone's gonna send me stuff I mean I'll make a video and review it I think I'll also try to put them into a broader context so it won't be like product name review it'll be like like one's bike shorts and one's are mirrors one is mirrors so I could just be like riding you know a general video about riding with bike mirrors which is something I've never done so it would make sense to make a video of whether I like it whether I find it annoying we've actually discussed this in the discord a little bit um, there's a link to the discord below I've talked about it a bunch but just because it's something I've really been enjoying basically a message board that goes along with the YouTube channel but yeah so we'll do a broader context video like that but then I can mention the name and put a link to this product but also be honest about in the context of mirrors do I like this one you know or does it work like it's supposed to and just show some footage of like this is how it installed this is how it moves around uh, this is how it broke or didn't break you know that kind of thing yeah and with the bike shorts I'm basically I don't ride in bike shorts I mean like skinny bike shorts but I do when I ride on my trainer and I've bought a bunch of other cheaper Amazon bike shorts so same thing I could do it all in the context of you know our 20 to 30 dollar bike shorts good enough to ride in you know and the perspective I think to me that makes it worth and worthwhile you know the quote-unquote review is that I don't buy $300 bib shorts I don't come from the roadie world and I'm not criticizing that it's just something that is out of my element so the review would kind of be like from the perspective of a non roadie can you get by with these if you just need a pair for something like sitting on the trainer or on really long rides on my gravel bike I do like to wear them underneath normal shorts or um, even pants depending on the weather so yeah a little bit of what's coming up anyways I think that's about it for this ride and ramble for now so yeah kind of a I don't know I just thought I'd do this for the heck of it um, kind of a I don't know something different I my goal too with this channel is to try and always do something a little different I know I have some repetitive threads that go on here like um you know, I do on Friday have another slow TV coming out, which is just the ride home on the Summit County hike and bike. And again, I've explained before that those, one of the purpose of those is the Shop Dirty River will scroll those through on their uh, big TV and their um, chill lounge. So it's just kind of cool to have a long, straight, like chill shot of the bike path. And I don't mind, you know, if I put them, you know, I might as well put them on my channel because it is my ride. And some people have said they like to pop them on while they ride on the trainer. I think it's something that's kind of, if you've never ridden out here, to skip around in, you know, watch for a little bit. Or, And, you know, YouTube lets you play stuff back at a higher speed, too. So you can actually watch it like a time lapse and, you know, um, half the time if you want to. So, yeah. So this video, this is Wednesday morning. We rode on Monday. I'm speaking on Tuesday. Put it out on Wednesday. That's the other thing I like about me and Ben's Monday rides is... Then it gives me that Wednesday ride video that I'm trying to keep on schedule about. I've talked about this on the live stream. The goal kind of is um, have a video come out on Monday that'll be varied. Um, one of the ideas is to talk about a topic, even though this week's was another ride video. Tuesday night, a live stream. Wednesday, a ride video. Thursday night, the other live stream. And then basically if I do anything like the, you know, review or topic stuff again, that would come out sometime over the weekend or if I got another interesting ride again that would come out over the weekend but that's kind of like a bonus for me so I'm aiming for four four releases a week with you know Monday through Thursday and then every so often a different one and also the channel members I want to get at least a video every other week I'd like to get a video every week up for the channel members but this is all that's all a new thing and I'm still working on that and what other content I could do for them and even you know some behind the scenes videos I need to get up an intro video for the members um, there's a link to becoming a member below it goes from $1.99 to $2.99 to $4.99 and it's just you know it's something that that money will go right back into the channel and be used to improve it so if it's something you're interested in check it out you'll be supporting um, you know uh, but like I said before, I use that money to buy music for the channel and graphics for the channel and stuff like that. So just keeping the content, you'll be making the content better for everyone. That's the reason to do it. But there are bonus features um, and bonus perks, as YouTube calls them, that come along with that because they make sure you do that. Anyways, 
that's all for this one. Thanks for watching and listening. And I will see you um, yeah, some other time. Bye. <laughs>